Well, actually, I've been interested in wood and loved it ever since I can remember. I learned a lot about woodcraft, which has given me a feel for the trees and the woods and how they relate. This can be used for the half of the top of a violin. And the piece we, other piece we had is, well, this will be one half of it. Here's the other half. And this will make the top of a viola when it's put together. Now, there are a couple of knots in here, and the plan is to try to work around those knots so that they won't make trouble. What I'm interested in now is to see what the waves that are traveling through the wood are like. And those are the things that I think are making a lot of difference in the way energy and the waves of energy can go through the wood itself. And the wood is all sorts of sort of discontinuities, if you will, that will make the energy have to slow down or go around something. It's a little bit like a river flowing. And if you put some rocks on the edge of a river, you'll change the whole flow of the river downstream. I think that's what's happening in violins. There are certain ways that those uh, blockages, the discontinuities, can be worked out. And that's the kind of thing I'm looking for, is to see what happens. Because some of the beautiful old instruments that I've been working with and testing show that there's a good deal of this sort of thing going on. I didn't know that the octet concept ever e even existed before. Henry Brandt, the conductor, walked in and asked me to do something he thought would be pretty crazy. He wanted somebody to make for him a set of violin-type instruments that would carry the sound of the violin itself, not the sound of the viola or the cello. He wanted the clarity and the projection and the overall power of the violin projected into seven other tone ranges. We had the first concert in 1965 at the YMHA on 92nd Street, and it was very well accepted. But from then on, we ran into people who didn't like it, we ran into indifference, but we ran into real hostility. I can't even play it in tune, but that'll give you an idea of what it sounds like. I had a lot of fun playing viola for some years, but it's hard to keep going, and I had to choose. If I'd been a better player, I might have stuck with it. But my friends used to say, Carlene, if you want people to enjoy your instruments, don't demonstrate them yourself. <laughs> I've been using this old beam that we put up here in the last 40 years, shall we say, to hang my fiddle plates on, because ever since I started making violins, I haven't done much work on the house. Actually, I think I've had probably the pair, the tops and backs of at least 300 instruments hanging on this beam ever since I started making fiddles. And someday these will sing. This is where we work a good part of the time, mostly in the winter when it's cold and we can keep this place controlled, temperature and humidity. And we're working on all sorts of things here. Well, this is an instrument that's just about put together, except for that needs a neck and scroll hitched into it here. But what we can do at this stage is to check the sounds. And they're quite different from what they are on the free plates. And this is a kind of tuning that we do after it's put together this way. Sometimes it can be done by scraping on the outside a little bit, but I'm trying to learn how to do it so that I can do what they call energy tuning, which gives you a chance to get some of this wood changed as if it were being played by an instrument player who's doing a good job on the instrument itself. Because no matter who works on it, the player or the violin maker, you're getting energy into these pieces of wood. And it does change the way the wood works. What we're doing here is measuring the normal modes that exist in a piece of wood that's this shape. And that gives us the sense of the stiffness of the wood which violin makers have been feeling and bending for the last several hundred years. And that feel and that bending is what we're assessing here.
I'm sure people think I'm a little crazy, but it's very exciting to put your hands on a big tree and then move them slowly away and back again and feel the energy that's coming out of that trunk. And it kind of goes with me whether I'm here or there. I feel very humble living with something that's that powerful that controls me no matter what I want to do.